So we, this brings us to the end, I'm afraid, of our little show. No, unfortunately, we, we have to end at a certain hour, you know? There are rules about these things. Um, now, we, we could happily play all night, and as you can tell, I could tell stories all night, so... Um, and I'm about to tell a long one now. I brought my eye on the clock. Um, we're going to end with, with the song that began my career in, in, in the music business. It was the first record Gordon and I ever made. We were actually just in a, in a club playing acoustic guitar, singing American folk songs mostly, and Everly Brothers tunes, and we got spotted by an A&R guy, invited to do a, um, uh, an audition at EMI Studios. It wasn't called Abbey Road yet. We did, we got a contract, we signed it, we were all set for our first session. And he had some songs he really wanted us to do that we were doing in our set. But Norman did say, look, if you know of any other songs uh, that you'd like to throw in there, you know, into the mixture, please say so. Now, this is where there's a little bit of a story, because at the same time as all that was happening, when we had our record deal. Uh, at that time, I was living in our family home in Wimpole Street in London. I had then and I have now two very beautiful sisters by the name of Jane and Claire. And my sister Jane was an actress who was quite successful and was sort of a bit of a celebrity and she'd been on the show called Jukebox Jury a few times, which was where you had to, they invited celebrities to get their opinion on the new releases. And she always had something to say, she was very musical. You know, we grew up in a musical household. Our mother was a classical oboe player. Taught George Martin the oboe, by the way, in one of those weird coincidences you couldn't believe. And, and Jane, therefore was her opinion on music was kind of respected and it was that was why she got invited by a magazine to go and see this new band who just come down to London from Liverpool with a weirdly misspelled name and all the fuss was about and all the girls were screaming over. So Jane went to see the Beatles to see what she thought of them for this magazine. She thought they were great, she thought the music was amazing, she thought they were charming and funny, she met them afterwards, she thought they were great and cute and all that and, and she liked them they liked her, one of them liked her in particular, asked her out, blah, blah, blah. So, all that stuff. So, that's how Jane ended up going out with Paul for a couple of years. And, and that meant that he was hanging around the house a lot when they weren't on the road. And eventually, our parents kind of took pity on him and um, invited him, offered him the guest hat room at the top of our family home, which was next to my bedroom. So, thus it was that Paul and I ended up sharing the top floor of our house for a couple of years and becoming friends. Of course, we had a lot in common. We both played guitar, him much very much better than me. Uh, we both had collections of American records. His was much more extensive than mine. In fact, in retrospect, it should have been a fairly depressing experience, but, but it wasn't. Uh, and during that time, I'd had the pleasure of hearing a number of songs he'd, he'd written. Um, I'll tell two quick song stories, if I, if I think I have time. Uh, there was a little, music room in the basement of our house, where my mother would give private oboe lessons sometimes. And she had told Paul that if he ever wanted to use the piano down there, he could. Because um, she didn't teach down there that much. She was mostly at the Royal Academy, where she was a professor. And so thus it was that one day John came over. This was early after Paul had moved in. And he and John were down there in, in this piano room, no guitars. The guitars were up in our bedrooms for a couple of hours. And then Paul called up the stairs and asked me if I wanted to hear the song they had just finished. So I came down, sat on the little sofa, and they sat side by side on the piano bench and played I Wanna Hold Your Hand for the first time to anybody anyway. And so that was cool. And, uh, and they asked me what I thought, you know. I said, oh, it's really good. <laughs> what do you say? And in truth, your reaction is you ask them to play it again straight away. Because it's, it's like when you used to buy a 45 and the minute the needle got to the end, you put it right back to the beginning. It was that great. Another song I heard was he played me this song called World Without Love that he'd just written. And he'd only written two verses, no bridge. And I said, oh, it's really good. That's a great song. He said, well, we're, I'm not doing anything with it. John doesn't like it. I read later in an interview that apparently when Paul would sing the first line, which goes, please lock me away, John would go, okay, I will. The song's over. He, I think he thought the song was too wimpy for the Beatles, so, so Paul hadn't finished it and he rejected it. So, cut to, we have our record deal, we're looking for songs, I go back to Paul, said, is that song still up for grabs? Is anyone doing it? He said, no, it's, I never finished it. He said, would you please finish it and could we have it? You know, we'd love to do it. So he wrote out the 
chords and the lyrics for me on a piece of paper, um, which I have very safely locked away in my safe in Malibu. Um, so that, of course, when the music business goes completely to shit, I can run to Sotheby's like the wind um, and cash in. So anyway, I did have to prevail upon him to finish the song in time for the session. Um, and uh, he did, uh, he wrote a bridge for us, wrote that out for me too, and it went on the list for our first session. So I'd like to invite Terry back out to join us. And I'd also like to, to say, this song makes a great sing-along. So please, I know that the thing is, it's 52 years ago this week that the record was number one, which means that if any of you can remember when it was number one, you're far too old to remember much of anything, like me. But just in case bits of the lyrics do come floating into your brain through the mists of time, please join in as we end our show with a, with a big sing-along version of World Without Love. Two, three, 